I became an architect too. I'm a registered architect after the war, but but I got away from that because all these great architects wanted me to work with them on these wonderful projects. So I was lured away, and and uh, and I've learned I've learned an awful lot. I think my whole work and practice has gotten very much richer working with all the best architects because I work, I think, with them, and you know, I sat with Luke Khan for six years, sometimes all night long, working on projects and uh, and having a lot of fun. You know, we agreed so much about how things should be. See, this is the drainage all coming down. We've had so much rain that it all comes down that slope and ends up here. Now, in, a, in another two or three weeks, this will be very, very dry. There won't be any water here. But see how nice it is in this in these woods with the filtered sunlight. You know, who can walk like this? You know, where are all the landscape architects? Where are they living? In some tight little area in the city. Or either in the suburbs, which is even worse. The suburbs are worse than the city. All nature is geometric. The universe is geometry. And the, the more we discover the more we see how everything is related, coming from a unification of species and developing. And you see in nature, like now they have a thing, oh, you should diversify because trees die. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Here's a pine wood, you see. It's all pine trees, very few other kinds of trees. And, and people, but is, is it monotonous? <laughs> Not at all. It's, it's exciting. And, always interesting uh, and there's enough diversity in unity that this is uh, diversity in unity this whole woods because the, the, the trees and the ferns the floor is all one fern hay scented fern these are and the, and the white pine trees that's all and these are this is all open when we moved here there were no trees here this is all pasture. And these trees represent 35 years of growth, all of these, because they came from nothing while we, while we were living. We used to ski. This is all open slope, and we used to ski down here all the time, down through here, down through the rocks and stuff. We had slalom courses through the rocks, through the trees. See, what nature tends to do is unify and gradually uh, develop one species in an area and the species that come are the ones that are suited to that ecology exactly and it's not academic ecology like a lot of these so-called uh, eco landscape architects uh, you know the, it, the thing that's what nature is is growth 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 that's what nature is that's what people love that's what people when they walk through the woods like this the reason they love it is because it's a unified feeling it's not a scattered thing with a lot of little stuff here and there scattered all over the place but always always simple look see the floor is all one one or two different friends here's a different friend here this one likes the sun more yeah, or can take the sun see when people do uh, so-called naturalistic what they're doing is copying the end result of a natural process in one particular little place and it's usually wiggly along the edges I mean they think they're copying being nature you can't copy anything you can't copy colonial or any designs and you can't copy it you know contemporary or what you, you have to be open to start your own design process within you and with the client and the site there's, there's one other, there's still one more dam down there and another little one beyond that but see that's pond and this is one of the big ponds that, that made the beavers did all this work you know see these are hop horn beam and that's one of the hardest woods and yet they cut these down you see the pines are easy for them <laughs> but this uh, hop horn beam Austria virginica by being in nature like this all the time, you're constantly uh, learning and you constantly experience the wonderful mystic spaces that, that my work 
that the important part of my work isn't objects, it's space, and the spatial uh, elusive movement of space is going, just like I say in the nature like this, you see, it's always a surprise to come from one area to another. There's always, like you go up that big hill and on the top, there's a whole other wonderful pine grove there. It's really cathedral pines all in there. But I'm impressed by the unity of nature and that, it, that the... Uh, so when you look at a hillside, and there it is, there's the, he just, the beaver, I mean, you may be able to see him. <laughs> see, he just, did you get a picture? He, he got... And see, in landscape design with clients, all you're really doing is connecting them to nature again, but the house and what they need outside is all man stuff, you see, but that's, man is nature too. And just like the beaver builds those houses, you know, it's a man's building his thing, but then you're kind of relating the client the, to his site and in the, in the most beautiful way. And, and instead of being a detriment to the natural scene, it enhances the natural scene. Actually strengthens it, makes it more exciting and more powerful. Just like a, a bridge going through a Swiss canyon, a bridge by Robert Mayer, the great bridge designer. Uh, it, instead of hurting, it intensifies the, the, uh, n n the uh, intensifies the natural scene there. Man-made thing, uh, uh, a National Park Service bridge wouldn't at all, it would ruin nature because it's trying to make it look like a tree. But by doing it in a delicate way, it's approaching a spider because the spider's way ahead of us in structure. Let's see. Let's go this way. Athletics and the body movement and space, it's all one problem. I mean, golf or swimming or running or skiing, tennis, it's all part of design. And the same things happen. Like it's an organic thing, you swing and everything, and it's using your whole body. I mean, it's the body doing this, like it takes back slowly like this, and it's like a spring. And then you come down like this, see? And, it, and it, you go, go through like that. And if you're doing it really rhythmically and loose and not thinking too much about it, as soon as you start to think of trying to improve it, everything goes bad. And, uh, but if, you, if you're just loose, I just go like that, you're fine. <laughs> but uh, skiing is the same way, you know? Uh, you don't ski the mountain, the mountain skis you. It's gravity. You just just let yourself go and let let gravity say where you move. And if you look like you're skiing, you're not skiing well. <laughs>